Tracy, um, we're facing the 25th uh, birthday of GDC today. We're looking back at the timeline of game, uh, game education. What kind of changes did we did we see in the last decades? Well, it's a bit incredible because I mean, a decade ago, uh, game education was just a twinkle in everybody's eyes, not even a baby, right? Um, I mean, I remember when I started teaching uh, games back in the late 90s, and people actually, people when I would come to GDC and say, you know, I'm doing this class, they'd say, you can't teach game design, you either know how to do it or you don't, right? Um, and now I think we know a lot more uh, about the discipline, and we know how to break it down, and we know how to, you know, create sort of uh, learning experiences for students in what is a very complex field, but that doesn't mean that it isn't teachable. And this guides me directly to my next question, uh, the future. <laughs> as we look at the industry or games as an art form, there are many questions. How can we give impulses and how can we do anything to this to change it, to <laughs> make games better and more interesting and more artful? Well, the real beauty of having a whole bunch of students in all of these amazing academic institutions uh, that are springing up around games and game studies is that they have questions already and they have the energy and the talent and now they're getting the skills uh, to begin answering those questions. So, you know, for me, I see my job as creating a community of risk-taking and, you know, skill-building and community-building and um, I think that the students are going to go out and answer those questions. Uh, I, I just need to create the community and create the structure and, and uh, you know, participate. Of course, we need <laughs> to inspire the people. That's exactly. Why. Yeah. exactly.